Have you ever felt like you were doomed to repeat the relationship mistakes of your past? This is such a common belief, and we're here to cover that in this video today to give you some new ways to think about your past relationships and how they impact the relationships you have today and the ones you're going to have in the future. I am Sandy Weiner. I'm a dating and love coach for single women over 40. And for the past eight years, I've been the CEO of Last Per State. I'm also the creator of the Woman of Value Life Mastery Program. Sandy, I love this topic. The idea that we might be doomed to repeat things that sucks, well, that just sucks. And here's why I love that we're talking about it. So we both are big on boundaries. We love discussing and helping clients and really the world with boundaries. And this particular concept is about creating great external boundaries and fantastic internal boundaries, the boundaries that allow you to stop how you're thinking and negative thinking. So I love that we're covering this whole concept. My name is Teresa Byrne, and I am a certified master self-defense instructor, certified um, master instructor martial arts, and I am the creator of the Empower System, which teaches people how to use uh, healthy and emotional and physical boundaries in their relationships. And I'm really on a mission to help women own their space, physically, mentally, personally, you name it. Sandy and I are also the creators, co-creators of the Boundaries for Beautiful Relationships program. So what are some of the mistakes that people have made in their past relationships, the most common mistakes? One of the biggest issues is when you attract a partner who doesn't carry his weight in the relationship. And I'll give you an example. One of my clients who was a people pleaser told me, well, it's just in my DNA to be a people pleaser. I was mm. kind of born this way. And I said, uh, no, no, you haven't been. <laughs> no, it's you not. not. Even, no, you're not. Um, most of the time we witness people who are people pleasing um, at home or we become people pleasers because of our home situation. So, for example, this client was rewarded as a child for pleasing her parents. And she didn't get attention just for being herself, but by doing. So she continued that cycle throughout her life, both with her friends and with a boyfriend in the past, and it was a mess. Mm. And an, another client of mine had a sick parent, and because of the parent being sick, she was told to always be quiet, don't make waves, be a good girl, get good grades. And so she became a people pleaser to please her parents to make sure that her mother stayed okay. And this, this led to her actually marrying a narcissist who mm -hmm. the narcissists love people pleasers. Um, so it can be part of your survival as a child. And that's, that's, you know, we do what we can to survive childhood, but it doesn't have to be who you are as an adult. We get to make choices and change our patterns and attract healthier relationships as we get older. Such a great point. And for anyone who's ever been in a toxic or abusive or narcissistic relationship, just know that no, you are not going to have to repeat that pattern. In fact, mm -hmm. we're going to offer you some tips today to help you stop that pattern and make different choices going forward. And there's all kinds of patterns, both known and unknown, that we pick up from our childhood, the messaging from parents, the messaging even from our culture, and we can unlearn them. And Sandy and I are going to give you the tips today. We are talking about what helps us shift from repeating the past. And we are going to give you, we are giving you the ABCs of choosing conscious, healthy relationships. And the first A is about awareness. Awareness is you stop reacting in the part of your brain that just makes you react and you move into the part of your brain that allows you to look at what you're doing. So you can learn from your experiences. You can start to ask questions like what's running the show here if you're trying to please people or how did I bring this in? If you're in a narcissistic relationship, what about me attracted at a narcissist? And is there anything to learn? And that is part of the, um, the, the awareness piece of the ABCs. And if you've had difficult relationships in the past without knowing how you brought it in, you might unconsciously repeat it. The second ABC, the second part of the ABCs, the B, is all about blame. Blame is an energy that you want to stay out of. You want to stay away from blame. If you keep yourself or the other person in blame, you will not shift because it becomes all about them. 
they have the power because they had the power to make you miserable or they have the powerful to make you better. That's not, you do not want to blame other people or yourself in relationship. And power is all about being able to make a choice. And the last C in the ABCs is conscious choice, making conscious choices. And that's really what boundaries are all about. Learning how to think proactively and make those conscious choices about what you do, what you say, and how you act and who you're with. Mm. It's so important to know that we have choices because uh, that was that was my awakening as I got divorced. And mm. a big part of my shift was going from obligation to choice. Like I felt like my whole life had been about obligation, obligation, and then and blame. Oh my God, <laughs> you know, it's so easy, oh, oh, yeah. so easy to get stuck there. But no woman of value wants to live in that space of being a victim. But sometimes if we're aware that we don't like the ways that we have been treated in the past, we think we have to go in the opposite direction. Mm. Like, right? Let's so say a woman who had a quiet or an emotionally unavailable father who was like cold goes for a loud controlling men. I mean, mm -hmm. don't, they don't always think that they're going for the controlling, but it becomes attractive to them. Or well, that's a woman, who they end up attracting, right, Sandy? Correct. They end up attracting the opposite. Or a woman who, who had an overbearing father who was loud looks for somebody who's quiet, and she wonders why the relationship fails. Well, in my 20s, I thought I needed the opposite of my father, too. So I chose a husband who I thought was the exact opposite of him, and I ticked all the boxes, like, oh, yeah, that's going to be a healthy <laughs> relationship, right? right. And it actually wasn't what I needed. And it turned out he was actually very similar to my father, which <laughs> got revealed to me over time. And I really thought, oh my God, I made a huge mistake in marrying the wrong person and staying for so long. But until I became a dating coach, I simply didn't understand my needs or what a healthy relationship looked and felt like. Oh, Sandy, I just want to honor you and the journey that you've been on. Sandy didn't mention how long she was married. It was how many years? 23. <laughs> 23 years. And to be able to come to uh, having conscious choice and then making different choices, I just, I really want to honor and celebrate you oh, for that. Thank you, Teresa. You are welcome. So let's talk about the idea of what is a mistake. And actually, a mistake is what we consider uh, as not the right option, or there's a right option and a wrong option, but really it's how we learn. If you think about how you grew up, you didn't automatically know how to stand up and walk. You had to crawl and you had to fall down. We are absolutely, as human beings, supposed to screw up, for lack of a better word, or fall down so that we can figure how to stand up. Or we have to, it takes a while to tie our shoes or learn how to walk. We first started learning as kids, we made mistakes all the time. And that's how our brains process information, input, and then create something new. So for a lot of my career, I've been on television and I filmed a movie. And what I found interesting was instead of mistakes, when we would film something and we would have to cut and then redo it, we called, I called them missed takes. So a movie or a, a scene in a film or a scene on television is, a, sh is a, a scene and it's a take. And so if we make missed takes, it just means, oh, cut, let's redo that one again. So mm. I always think of takes as missed takes. I love I'm that. Really, do you like that? <laughs> yeah. It's a mistake. cut, redo. <laughs> so one mistake I used to make, or missed take, I used to uh, have a lot in relationships, was around college and after college, I was attracted to big personality, men. And that was not always good because if any of you know, uh, one of the personality traits of narcissists or sociopaths is they can put on a really big show. Well, it took me a little while to figure that out, that my picker was not necessarily making the healthiest choice when I would pick someone with a big personality. So I chose now to live differently. If someone has a big personality, sometimes I will see the insecurity or the bravado behind it. Mm. You know, it's, it's interesting that we really can't always choose who we're attracted to, right. but we can choose who we engage with. We can choose who we share our lives with. So it, even if attraction is so hardwired into us from our past, from circumstances that happen in our lives, we get to make conscious choices about who we let into our lives. So what do we typically do though when we're in a relationship that's not working and the typical thing to do is 
we believe the words that the people we're in relationship with tell us. Um, so we say, they say that they love us, but they don't really love us. Um, mm -hmm. They say that they're there for us, but they don't show up in a crisis. Um, also, we don't speak up and set boundaries when our needs are not met or our feelings are hurt. We just stay quiet. But many of us just don't have the skills to do that, which is why we teach this. And we also tend to justify bad behaviors like, he's a great guy, but you know, when he gets drunk, he's like really angry. Um, but you know, the rest of the time he's so loving. No, 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 no. He doesn't no. hit me. <laughs> he doesn't hit me, right? So those are red flags that, that you need to be crystal clear about and do not justify those bad behaviors. Another thing we do is stay in relationships way too long. We just keep staying. So for all kinds of reasons, I mean, for marriage, people stay for the kids. That's what I did. Um, I stayed also because I didn't believe anybody was out there who would be the right person for me. So just keep what you got, you know, and, and keep going. And it's just, it's not healthy to stay that long. And you see, in the end, like often kids will say, why did you stay so long? You know, I was, I told my mother, please leave my father when I was 16. Um, and she was like, why are you telling me that? And I said, mom, you're miserable. I'm miserable. Like, get out. But she didn't have the courage to do it for another 12 years. Get out. Get out. Okay. All right. So what else do we typically do in relationships that uh, aren't working? Well, we question ourselves. We make it about us. Is there something wrong with me? And is it normal to feel this way? Or am I too sensitive? And it's funny, Sandy runs a group called Last First Date. And a lot of times a woman will post something like, yeah, this guy did this thing on this date where he made me pay half and he, he didn't walk me to my house. He didn't open the door. Is that rude? Um, and Sandy's like, yeah, that's absolutely rude. You're not being too sensitive. Or we think fearful thoughts about ourselves. Like, am I too bitchy or too demanding? When really all we're doing is asking for what we want. But we don't want to be a bitch. We don't want to be needy. We don't want to be demanding. Or like our mother or our father. So we end up stuffing our emotions. What else do we typically do? We question our ability to make good choices. For anyone who's been in an abusive or difficult relationship in the past, you then start to wonder, is this something uh, like, can I make good choices? Can I be attracted to good men? Can I do this correctly? And especially if you've been in an abusive relationship or if you've ever been assaulted, women tend to then kind of internalize it and think, I don't know how to fill in the blank. And they question their own choices. And the last one that we do is we um, have, many of us have grown up in dysfunctional families or relationships where we created or we were shown learned helplessness or learned hopelessness. And that's just when you can't ask for anything more. Anytime you scream or you cry, no one's there to take care of you. So you start to believe that you don't have any power, which is not true. And Sandy's going to go into it in our tip sheet. Mm. So we have a tip sheet for you this week. So again, you don't have to take notes. You can just download it below. Ooh. And yep. And the tip sheet is based on the ABCs of choosing conscious, healthy relationships, not the relationships that were toxic to you from the past, but making better choices. And so I'm going to go into some detail about, you know, more detail about the three ABCs that, that Teresa spoke about. AA is for awareness. So uh, you want to identify what's going on. So I want you to ask yourself, is this person being emotionally or verbally abusive? And one thing that I love this motto, memorize this, put a tattoo on your head, on your mirror. There is no excuse for abuse. There is no excuse for abuse. People no who abuse, for abuse, no. <laughs> and you know, people who abuse make tons of it. You know, there's like, you know, they're just, well, I was tired. That's why I was yelling at you. Well, you know, I was just, I was just hungry. So I took it out on you. I had a bad day at work. So I'm yelling at you. You know, it's just a bad day at work. No, no excuses. It's abuse. So call it what it is and don't shove anything under the rug. It just becomes a lumpy rug and don't justify <laughs> bad behavior. Instead, Talk to a supportive friend or a coach, somebody who can really help you to identify those bad behaviors, those abusive behaviors, and know how to set a boundary around them. Number two is pay more attention to actions over words. Many times there are confusing messages like, 
a person you're dating is amazing around other people, but when they're at home, they mm. throw you under the bus, mm. they speak nasty to you. There's so many things um, that can happen. I once dated a guy who kept calling himself a nice guy, and his actions showed me a completely different person, but he kept saying, but I'm a nice guy. He was from the South, so he was a nice guy. Mm. And... Uh, <laughs> He was not a nice guy. And if you're a nice guy, you don't have to tell people you're a nice guy all day long because they see it. So somebody whose words and actions don't match, it's like giving somebody a gift with one hand and smacking them across the face with the other. Mm. It doesn't work. And B is for blame. So what do you want to do? You want to watch out for blaming other people for your circumstances. You have power. You just have to do something with it. So it requires an action. You're not that little kid who can blame things on other people anymore. You want to take action. I love this. And the other part of blame is to not blame yourself. So it's also about not thinking that things are your fault. Even if someone else has told you that they're your fault, blame is not a helpful emotion. Energetically, it's very low vibration. So don't only take ownership for things that you are responsible for, the facts, not making everything your fault. The last C is for conscious choice. And these are the ABCs to keep you out of doomed relationships forever. But mm -hmm. conscious choice is choose to speak up. So learn how to have those tough talks. And it's, if it's something that you tend to avoid or you uh, are uncomfortable bringing up uncomfortable information, you've got to make the conscious choice to learn how to speak up. And also learn how to ask more helpful questions. Instead of thinking, is there something wrong with me? Is it normal to feel this way? Or am I too sensitive? Ask yourself consciously, does this, behave, does this person's behavior feel off to me? Or what about this isn't working for me? And remember, drawing boundaries about what doesn't work for you is not only conscious, it is important. Oh, so important. So we want you to trust your ability to make good choices. Self-care means that you trust yourself. This is so much of the work that I do with clients is having, having them trust themselves to make better choices. Thank you for watching our video. And if you found these tips helpful, please download the free tip sheet, the ABCs of choosing conscious, healthy relationships, and share this video with your friends on social media, email it to them, spread the word, help people, know that boundaries aren't bitchy, they are beautiful.